Hi guys. So um, today I want to uh, discuss about uh, Zion, uh, that is like uh, Kali Linux, but for uh, blockchain security. So uh, let me, uh, my goal with this video is basically to show you a bit more about the, the VM and what is inside and what is basically the usage and on all the different tools and so on. Um, and uh, I think that it's a really interesting project um, and uh, actually it has been uh, created by uh, some of my friends at um, Alborn. So um, that's also why I, I want to uh, shout out uh, to, to, to you guys about what they are doing that is, uh, I think, uh, really nice. So they basically released that um, maybe last month. Uh, don't remember exactly. Just take some time to, to install the VM and download the VM. That's also why I'm making the video. Uh, I mean, if you take a look at the VM, basically, it will be uh, something like 15 gigabyte to download and so on and by default it requires like eight processors and uh, and a bunch of on uh, um, memory and so on so it's kind of uh, EV uh, at first so they released the stuff um, so that's the blog post for the release there is a dedicated uh, website where you can see like blockchain development and security testing and so on so uh, for actually a bunch of different uh, blockchain uh, and protocols that are uh, supported uh, at the same time solidity evm one and uh, also um, stuff that are uh, rust based uh, blockchain so uh, you have uh, like ethereum solana uh, substrate near and so on a, a bunch of them so let's go directly into it the password and the um, username is uh, zion like that um, so nothing fancy for the for the moment and then um, you have something like that. So I really like the, the logo. Um, and regarding the uh, content of the of the VM, uh, you have uh, multiple stuff. So you have the, the home space and so on. Even the um, the Windows Manager is actually pretty pretty nice and pretty um, clear. Um, then we can go inside application, and that's uh, the typical shape of. Uh, Kali Linux, if you are familiar with that. Um, so you have uh, this uh, stuff with like multiple um, uh, chapter, let's say. Uh, so as you can see first with the one with protocol tools, we can see that they support, um, they, they got some stuff for Algeron, for Nir, for Polkadot, Solana, Substrate, and so on. So uh, that's uh, clearly a first idea of there is a bunch of stuff regarding Rust. I mean, uh, Rust-based blockchain, like Substrate, Solana, Polkadot, Near, all of that is basically Rust. Then you have Encore, Algorand, that will be more in uh, Go, uh, and, and so on. Then you have uh, EVM tools. So even if you are not planning to actually use this VM because you prefer to have your own system, I mean, that's my case. Um, at least that's really interesting, uh, I think, for me to, to see what they consider at Alborn to be like the, the tools to have um, with them all the time. So there is some tools that actually I'm already really familiar with, but there is some tools that I actually discover uh, with, the, with the VM. So regarding EVM tools, you have a bunch of stuff like Bruni, Foundry that will basically allow you to do development and testing like Ganache as well. You have Get, you have Remix, you have Sertoa for formal verification, uh, you have Scribble, uh, that is the uh, stuff from uh, consensus diligence to do a uh, property testing and, and so on. Uh, you have Solsys Select to select the Solidity compiler version you need to have to basically do the stuff. I think this stuff is actually developed by Trader Bits, if I remember, and so on. Then you have EVM automated automated tools so it's more for uh, security purposes in that case you have Manticore symbolic execution uh, for EVM and other stuff but mainly from that um, created by Trade of Bits Mitril um, so um, static analysis tool uh, developed by Consensus Diligence Litter by Trade of Bits as well Sol Graph to generate like a, a call graph of um, the different uh, function and um, like which function will call what into a smart contract so really really useful and so on you have evm feathers so in that case there is only uh, a china there is actually multiple evm feathers but uh, they decided to only put this one um, as a as a command line tool um, and um, yeah that's perfectly fine i mean a china is uh, for me one of 
the really best further uh, for EVM. Um, uh, I will actually put a link to, to um, a talk I've made to um, ETHCC in Paris regarding like the, the state of the art of uh, Ethereum fuzzing. So you can just uh, see the, the link below. Um, so Echina, really good. And then, uh, as you can see, that's finished for the EVM stuff. So I think there is maybe some tools that are actually missing. I mean, you can think of, let's say, um, uh, HEVM, like the, the, the app tools. Uh, regarding Foundry, there is also actually Foundry uh, Fuzz that can also be considered as EVM further, and so on and so on. There, there is some additional tools that are really useful for EVM uh, that are not there, but uh, I mean, if you have some idea like that, please just contact the guy from Alban. I mean, they are really good guys, so they will be able to uh, to add the stuff if uh, they if they seems if they consider it's really interesting. Um, so that's uh, that's good. Then we have uh, Rust tools, so that's a bunch of stuff for Rust. Um, so in that case, you have the classical stuff like Clippy, Fix, Format, Inspect, and all these kind of stuff that are uh, generic Rust um, uh, plugin, like cargo plugin, um, to basically help you in the uh, Rust development and, um, and making some better Rust code. So there is really a bunch of them, uh, and I'm using a, a lot of them actually. Then you have Rust uh, automated tools, so that all the, the kind of uh, tool in Rust for uh, security purposes and to find maybe vulnerability and stuff like that and to do analysis on your Rust code. So in that case, they are mainly using that for, I will say, two main reasons. I think the first reason is for all the uh, smart contract written in Rust. So you can think of a Solana smart contract uh, and, and stuff like that, or even like Cos Cosmosm smart contract uh, and this kind of um, uh, smart contract written in Rust and compile into uh, WebAssembly or for the case of Solana into like eBPF uh, stuff. So you have a uh, cargo audit, really nice. You have cargo gagger for unsafe uh, code. You have uh, Myri for um, like, um, basically it's like an interpreter of MIR that is the intermediate representation of the Rust compiler. So really nice, really efficient to find um, vulnerability. You have outdated to find um, like outdated dependencies uh, in Rust. You have a siderophil made by Trail of Beats, uh, tarpaulin uh, and so on. Um, so a, a bunch of them, really, really nice um, um, selection in that case. A really complete selection. And then you have Rust Fuzzers, so you have, um, so in that case, uh, I suppose it's Cargo AFL, I mean, if you click on it, you would get uh, AFL, Rust-C, uh, Cargo Install Force AFL, so it seems that uh, th there is something missing uh, in, in this one, so you need to do Cargo Install Force AFL to install AFL Fuzz, in that case. Uh, you have a Fuzz, so I suppose it's Lib Fuzzer, uh, Cargo Fuzz, basically, and then you have Hong Fuzz, uh, Rust, uh, that is um, definitely a really good one. I mean, for all stuff regarding Rust, I mean, you can just take a look at my playlist regarding Rust fuzzing and you will get a, a bunch of stuff and, uh, and learn how to use those tools, uh, basically. I mean, again, I will put the link in the description below. Then, uh, surprisingly, you have only one step regarding Go automated tools. Uh, so with GoSec, I mean, GoSec is a really nice tool, but clearly there is a bunch of stuff that are missing. I mean, um, on my training regarding like Go audit and, and fuzzing, I'm listing really a bunch of tools that can be really useful. And in the same way, you also have multiple fuzzers available for Go uh, code. I suppose the main reason they, uh, they put that like that is um, there is no smart contract written in Go. So uh, in the same way for Rust, I mean, Rust, there is smart contract written in Rust, but there is also a bunch of uh, blockchain um, infrastructure like nodes, layer one, layer two, that are written in Rust. So for, typically for those kind of uh, targets, it's really useful to also have this, um, this, this stuff um, in your hand. Um, for Go, it's mainly, again, layer one, layer two. I mean, you can think of 
uh, Algorand uh, of uh, Cosmos and so on. You have some SDK uh, that are uh, that or even get uh, that will basically allow you to uh, write blockchain uh, software blockchain node in in Go. So that's maybe why there is not that much tool uh, regarding uh, Go. Uh, there is I think a bunch of them that can be uh, added. Um, and again for further there is also a bunch of them. I mean there is Go first. There is um, uh, leap further uh, you can also use leap further for go um, and uh, really recently they uh, starting at the go 1.18 they introduce um, a fuzzing um, from like fuzzing library directly inside go inside like the testing library under the testing library uh, that is actually really nice i already made a video about that um, I, I think it's it's really nice i prefer my classical way but i, I think it's, a, it's still something really nice again i mean there is some video about that on the on the channel so please uh, take a look at that so uh, again definitely some stuff that are uh, missing there so uh, maybe i will i will tell them uh, more more in deep what should be added but i suppose it's also because uh, there is it's a really specific usage i mean it's, it's really only if you are uh, doing audits on um, protocols nodes that are written in in go so that's maybe why then you have some general tools i mean docker python to Python 3. Python 2 is even uh, surprising because, I mean, to be honest, I'm not expecting anyone to use Python 2 anymore. Um, so uh, Node.js, VS Codium, um, again, really, uh, really useful. I mean, typically when you are using uh, NPM packages. Uh, and in terms of resources, you have some direct link to Polkadot Wiki. Uh, so Polkadot, Solana, Solidity, Substrate, the Rust book, that is the Bible for uh, Rust, uh, clearly. Again, maybe the it could be useful to have some uh, extra stuff. I mean, usually just the doc is not um, enough, so um, could be could be nice to to add more stuff in the in the future. So that's really good. You have some some editors. I mean, they make everyone happy with like Vim and maybe some some other. Um, in terms of internet, yeah, Firefox Chromium really useful as well to have multiple of them, and uh, yeah, a bunch of them. Uh, maybe it may, might have been useful to maybe put Brave uh, on it, and maybe uh, maybe there is already some extension. Actually, it's it's something I have not um, tried to discover yet. Maybe there is already some uh, a MetaMask. Yeah, perfect. So there is already MetaMask. You have Phantom, uh, typically for um, for oh, I completely forgot for for Nier or for Solana. I don't remember for, for which phantom is used. Um, and you have a, a bunch of them. So uh, that's, uh, that's, that's really cool. Yeah, it's for Solana. So you have phantom, you have um, Gnome shell extension. So I suppose that's something default. And you have some other, this one is, yeah, the Coinbase wallet and so on. So that's also good. I mean, you have some, some stuff by default. Welcome to Zion. So as you can see, I opened the browser and by default, they they redirect me to the documentation of Zion. So install Zion and so on. EVM tools and I think, yeah, exactly. So you have the, which tool have been installed. You have the link and so on. You have the common. You have also uh, where you can find more information, typically the GitHub link on that. So that that's pretty nice. Uh, so as you can see for Go, there is more than just GoSec. It's just that in that case, only GoSec is available from the um, application menu. Uh, but there is uh, unconvert. Maybe there is some additional stuff for yeah, cargo first, exactly. Rust to my take tool, okay. Rust tool and so on, okay, good. So that's uh, that's really good. Uh, I'm really happy that they provide something like that. I mean, it's also, I think, a really good uh, way for uh, actually people to maybe start to discover the stuff. I mean, that was what the, the main goal for, for people that are a bit familiar with Kali. Uh, Linux. Uh, it was basically the goal of Kali Linux uh, that was called uh, Backtrack before. It was to uh, have um, everything into one VM for like a quick audit or even for people to discover. I mean, uh, myself as well, uh, some like maybe 10 years ago, I actually downloaded Kali Linux even if I was completely unaware of how to use it uh, and, and so on. And I basically discovered uh, security with Kali Linux. So I'm really happy that they actually provide the same uh, stuff 
for, for blockchain security because there is clearly um, a bunch of stuff that you can do in blockchain security. It's really a, an amazing um, area to, to play with and, and to dig into. Um, so um, I'm, I'm really happy that they uh, have been doing that and provide that for, uh, for people. So uh, I hope you appreciate the video. I mean, uh, as I mentioned, I will put a bunch of links regarding Rust security, Go security, and so on uh, directly on the description. Um, please don't hesitate to put some comments uh, regarding Zion. Um, and uh, I, I think I will also link some other videos I made regarding Zion um, on the on the on the links below. So. Um, if you have any suggestions and so on, don't hesitate to, to, to send them a message and, and so on. They are really uh, proactive and a uh, really nice guy. So uh, that, will, uh, that will be good. And uh, yeah, let me know what you would like to see uh, in, the, in the next video. And uh, see you next time. Bye.